Welcome. This is what is happening on the Sun today, the 2nd of September 2011. We've had very little solar activity, and so we'll take a look and see why in a second. But first, today's trivia question. On this date in 1752, Great Britain adopted the Gregorian calendar. The 2nd of September in 1752 was a Wednesday. So the trivia question is, what was the day and the date of the next day? The answer will be given at the end. Since we last met, the Sun has produced just two C flares, although the X-ray background has risen to the B4 level. This despite having a large number of sunspot regions on the Sun at this particular time. So let's take a look at them and see whether we can make rhyme or reason of all of this. Currently we have six officially numbered regions on the disk. That is because 1284 rotated over the west limb earlier today. There are also a couple of unnumbered regions on the disk as well as you'll see in a minute. So let's take a look at each in detail and see what's going on with them. First we'll take a look at region 1280 in the northwest. This is what it looked like yesterday and this is what it looked like today. You can see there's been quite significant growth, particularly in the leader portion of the region. This is strange because it's approaching the west limb and the foreshortening should actually make it be looking as though it is shrinking. So this region is really growing quite quickly. You can also see that there are two new regions that have come up, one to its north and one to its east. But they are relatively small conglomerations of uh, tiny pores. Next we'll take a look at the complex 1277, 1279 and 1282 which are just west of Sun's center in the northern hemisphere. This is what it looked like yesterday and here is what it looks like today. Region 1277 looked like this yesterday and hasn't changed very much today as you can see by the comparison of these two figures. Region 1279 to its south and east is a different kettle of fish. Yesterday it showed signs of growing or breaking up, I wasn't sure which. It seems to be growing, there seems to be more spots and the area seems larger, but there's no new spots coming up, which is sort of strange. Lastly, the region 1282 is showing signs of growth. This is what it looked like yesterday, and here's what it looks like today. You can see it's spread out quite a bit, and the satellite spots between the leader and the trailer seem to be far better defined and somewhat larger. Region 1283 in the northeast seems to have grown quite a bit. However, some of that can be accounted for by the change of perspective as it rotates further onto the disk. However, I think it is clear that the trailer region has developed somewhat in the last 24 hours. Last but not least is region 1281. Comparing the two pictures yesterday to today, I don't think there's a great deal of change. Although this is a very odd spot region because the penumbral area of the leading spot is huge compared with the size of the spots. And that seems quite unusual to me. So despite all the changes in these regions, none of the growth has been particularly explosive. So that's why I think the amount of activity that we've been getting out of the sun in the last few days has not been particularly spectacular. So now let's take a look at the evolution of these regions using the HMI data from the Solar Dynamics Observatory. First up is the sunspot movie, taken in white light. And second is the magnetic movie. And just to remind you, in the magnetic movie, the white areas are positive magnetic fields, that is magnetic fields coming out of the sun, and the dark areas are negative magnetic fields, that's magnetic fields going into the sun. In the transition region movie from the AIA instrument, there are three areas I'd like you to take a look at. There are two filaments on the disk that have a good chance of lifting off. They're both S-shaped filaments, one is in the north and one of them is in the south. The prominence that I touted yesterday has a potential for lifting off, indeed lifted off which is rather gratifying. So keep an eye out for that towards the end of the movie. In the low temperature coronal movie, once again compare the relative levels of activity in each one of the active regions and see which ones you think are the most active and the most dynamic. Those are the ones to keep an eye out for a flare in the future. In the high temperature coronal image from the SXI instrument on GOES, you can see there's a bright arcade of loops in the southeast that is the aftermath of the prominence eruption that I showed you earlier. This probably means there was a coronal mass ejection associated with it. Unfortunately, the coronagraph images from the SOHO instrument is running a few hours behind the SDO data. And we find that the coronal mass ejection is just beginning to get underway in the southeast. And so we have to wait until tomorrow's video to see it clearly. Meanwhile, the ACE data shows us that the solar winds temperature has dropped quite considerably. The uh, velocity is continuing to ease lower and lower and the density is hovering around about one proton per cubic centimeter. 
The high energy electron flux has remained stable over the last 24 hours, but we still have had no proton events. The auroral zone looks a little more active than it did yesterday, however the KP index is not much change, varying between 0 and 2. So in summary then, the X-ray background is at the B4 level. The sunspot number is relatively high at 120. The radio sun is at 108 solar flux units. The solar wind speed has fallen further to 285 kilometers per second with a density of less than one proton per cubic centimeter and geospace conditions are considered quiet. My 24 hour forecast is that we have a good chance of C flares. M flares are possible but X flares are very unlikely. The sunspot number will remain high. The chance of getting coronal mass ejection is good. Solar wind speed is low, and the chances of getting a major geomagnetic storm in the next 24 hours is remote. The composite coronal image shows us that we have no new regions due back for at least three or four days. So we're going to have to rely on the emergence of new regions or growth in the existing regions to get increased levels of activity. The answer to the trivia question about Britain adopting the Gregorian calendar meant that it had to add 11 days to its calendar. So the next day was Thursday the 14th of September. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.